The exercises featured in the Novi Yoga Show are not suitable for everyone. It is recommended that you consult a physician before beginning this or any other exercise program. Well, hey there, and welcome. So glad you could join us. I'm Melanie. Welcome to the Nova Yoga Show. We're here in gorgeous St. John's, Newfoundland, and today is about making some delicious space in the body, opening our minds, our hips, and our hearts. Joining us today, we have Milo and we have Elizabeth. Milo is going to be showing some variations and modifications, so if you're newer to yoga, it's best to have a look at what he's doing. So we're gonna start in a seated position. So Milo's actually going to sit on a blanket. So if you have a pillow or a blanket that you can sit on to lift your hips up, it's gonna make sitting a lot more comfortable. So we're gonna come into a comfortable cross-legged seat and we're gonna open up the hands so the backs of the hands fall to the knees, the palms are lifted to the sky and we're gonna close the eyes. And sitting up nice and tall, take the shoulders on to the back so that you can open up through your heart. An important part in making space is breathing. So let's start off with three deep breaths, three big sighs. Inhale, and through your mouth. And taking that again, inhale, exhale. And one more time, feel free to make some noise. Take a deep breath in. And, uh, and then lightly connect your lips so the breath is more contained, controlled. Breathing your ocean breath in through the nose. Using the back of your throat as you exhale. Creating that ocean-like sound. And remembering to stay connected to the breath today. The inhale, making space in your body and the exhale, clearing out anything that needs to go. Opening up your eyes, bring your hands together in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra. And then from there, touch your fingertips down so the hands, the fingertips are placed in front of you. And then you're gonna walk or slide your hands forward so you're not completely folded, you're just about half or three quarters of the way there. And you're gonna rise up onto your fingertips so that your palms are lifted and really firm up your arms. And we're gonna wave the spine from here. So with your inhale, look out past your fingertips, kind of offer up your heart. And on your exhale, bow your head and curl it in and feel all of that amazing space throughout your upper back. Inhale, waving the heart forward, gaze forward. And then exhale, coil it in, curl it in. One more time, inhale, and exhale. And then surrender, completely fold. So let your palms release to the ground. Maybe you can drop to your forearms. Let their spine surrender. Let your, your head just become nice and heavy. And allow yourself to breathe into wherever you're finding space. So throughout your outer hips, your lower back. Might feel especially delicious if you've spent a lot of time sitting at a desk over a computer. And then rolling up from this place. And we're gonna switch up the legs so that we're sitting with the other foot on top or the other leg in front. And you might feel this a little differently through the hips once we've folded. So bring your hands together in front of your heart. And then from this place, touch your fingertips down. Start to walk or slide your hands forward, coming into the fold, and again, not all the way there. Rising up onto your fingertips so that your palms lift, firming up through your arms. And with your inhale, looking forward, offering up the heart. And then exhale, bowing your head, curling it in. Inhale to lift the gaze and the chest. And then exhale to find space throughout your upper back. One more time, inhale. And exhale. 
and then surrender. Palms can release to the ground, maybe forearms and let your head drop and breathe into your low back, into your outer hips, wherever you're feeling that stretch, that space, that openness. Rolling up from this place. And let's release this position and come into hands and knees. So from hands and knees, we're actually gonna take it back into child's pose. So sitting back onto the heels, letting your spine relax forward and keeping your arms reaching forward. So it's a more active ver version or form of child's pose and you should start to really feel some goodness throughout your shoulders, your armpits, your upper back. And then you're gonna lift up onto your fingertips so that your palms rise and feel even more space in that upper back, chest, armpit, shoulder area, breathing there. And we're going to take this child's pose into sort of a little bit of a twist so that we get to feel a really amazing side stretch. So I want you to lift up your torso. And I'd like you to pick up your chest, let your, your heart, your chest rest on your left knee. And then your arms extend out to frame your head. And again, you lift up onto your fingertips and you should feel real nice space and openness release through that right side. And you're gonna breathe into that area. Remember, breath is so important in making space and finding flexibility, releasing tension and just living with more ease. And then you're gonna lift up from there, walking through center and letting the chest rest on the right knee. Same placement of the arms, reach them out to frame the head, rise up onto the fingertips, and breathe into that release you feel through your left side. And we tend to store a lot of tension throughout your, the shoulders and the upper back, the chest, the heart, so this becomes a really nice way just to feel more open and spacious through that area. One more breath there and then walking the hands back to the center. And shifting forward into hands and knees, let's lift up into downward facing dog. So spread your fingers really, really wide, and then curl your toes under, lift your hips up and back, creating your upside down V. So the hands are shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide, feet are hip width apart. Because we're making space today, let's move around in our downward dog a little bit. So you're gonna walk your dog. You're gonna bend one knee at a time, sinking one heel at a time to the ground and feeling how that stretches you out through the hamstrings and calves. And then you can even start to release throughout the neck and the head, giving yourself a little shake. And even release your jaw and stick out your tongue. Take a deep breath in. And out through your mouth. Come down to your knees, and let's take on extended puppy pose, also known as Anahata Asana, one of my favorites. So you're gonna keep your hips lined up over your knees, and you're gonna walk your hands forward so that the arms stay straight. And then from this place, you're gonna start to melt your chest down to the ground. So try to keep the arms straight. See if you can rest your forehead on the mat. Maybe if you're feeling a little more flexible, if there's more space available, you might be able to even touch your chin down and just feel how this opens you up through the upper body, the shoulders, the armpits, making all sorts of great space through the area where we feel oftentimes very tight, very tense. And then sliding the hands back up to hands and knees. And we're gonna lift up into downward facing dog. So curl your toes under and lift your hips to the sky. Now in your downward dog, I'd like you to step your feet together. So bringing your feet together, which will help with balance now because we're gonna lift a leg. So lift your left leg to the sky, bend your knee, open up your hip and gaze underneath your left armpit. Make sure that you're strong in your foundation. Arms are firmed up. You're pressing into that standing foot and you're opening up through the hip. Should feel really, really nice. And then you're gonna draw that knee into the belly and you're gonna see, see if you can step your left foot all the way up to meet your left thumb. If it gets stuck, no worries. Just take your hand around your left ankle and coax the foot a little more forward. We're gonna take warrior one. Look at your back foot and drop your heel down. Feet are about hip width apart. 
back heel is anchored and the toes are angled forward. Milo and I are gonna come up with some support. So we're gonna place our hands on top of the thigh or you can just sweep your arms up if you know your warrior one. And once you're standing, then we'll lift the arms to the sky. So from here, just check out your stance again and make sure that you do have some width between the feet. It'll make you feel so much better and, and more balanced here. Back toes angled forward. That rule of always having the knee directly over the ankle, never extending past. Lifting your arms up, spinning your palms in to face each other, and then letting your upper ribs and your chest move to the front of the mat. So just turning a little more so that you face forward. And then from there, we're gonna join the hands behind the back, interlacing the fingers. And we're gonna roll the shoulders back to open up through the heart. And you can even look up, finding all sorts of space throughout the front body. And then we're gonna fold this. We're gonna take it forward to the inner knee, inner thigh, letting the knuckles rise to the sky for a devotional warrior. And that feels so good, we're gonna do it again. So keep your hands connected, press down into your feet, lift up through your chest, open your heart. And let your exhale carry you forward into that fold. We're gonna rise up, stand tall, sweep your arms to the sky, warrior one, and bring your hands to your hips. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot. And I'd like you to smoothly step forward so that you're at the top of the mat. So we're gonna find tree pose, we're gonna balance. We're gonna shift the weight into that left leg. So Milo is gonna take the variation. He's gonna bring the right heel to the left ankle. Very important to find your gaze point, something fixed you can look at. I'm gonna take it a little deeper. I'm gonna to go to my inner calf, and Elizabeth is gonna go all the way up to the inner thigh. So very important never to place the foot on the knee. We always wanna go above or below the knee. So pressing and squeezing the foot into the leg to open up through the hips. And let's everyone stretch the branches to the sky, lifting up. Making sure that you're breathing. And then from there, Milo is going to take a hold of opposite wrists or elbows behind his back to open up the front body. Elizabeth and I are gonna experiment with something. We're going to bend the left elbow, taking the tricep stretch. And then we're gonna take the right hand behind the back. So the right hand moves to the low back so that we can open up a little bit more through the chest and the shoulders. Draw the ribs into the body, keep the neck long. And then bring your hands to your hips, point your knee forward and set your foot down. Bring your hands right away to the back of your thighs and massage all the way down the length of your legs, giving your hamstrings some love. Touch your fingertips down, big step back with your right leg. Step it back behind you. Lizard pose, touch the back knee down. Both hands come to the inside of the foot, walk your front foot a little wider so that there's space. So Milo is gonna stay on his hands, but he's gonna bend his elbows and let the chest release down towards the ground. Elizabeth is gonna use a block and she's gonna place her forearms on the block. I think I'm gonna go down to my forearms to floor and know that once you're here, if you crave more, you can always straighten out that back leg. So completely up to you. And here you're finding space throughout your hips. We hold a lot of clutter there. So breathe through that clutter. Breathe away all that you have held there. And then lift back up onto your hands pushing the block out of the way if you were using it and walk your front foot to the center of your hands. Let's come into hands and knees. So Milo is gonna find child's pose. He's gonna rest there. Elizabeth and I are gonna lift up into downward facing dog. Then we're gonna shift forward into plank pose. I'm gonna lower my knees and we're both gonna come all the way to the belly, elbow squeezing into the ribs as we come down. Untuck the toes, rolling open through the chest, cobra pose. And then curling the toes under, hips up and back, downward facing dog. And Milo, you can meet us here in downward dog. And we're gonna step the feet together. And we're gonna lift the right leg, bending the knee, opening up the hip and turning the gaze underneath that right armpit. And feel how freeing, how liberating that is. 
and then guiding the knee into the chest and seeing if you can step your right foot all the way up to meet the right thumb. And again, if it doesn't quite reach, no worries. Just take a hold of the foot and coax the foot forwards. So we're gonna take warrior one, ground your back heel, have space between the feet width wise, have the back toes angled forward. You can come up with one swoop of the arms or you can use your hands to help you up. Lift your arms to the sky. Making sure again, back toes angled forward, knee directly over the ankle, strong through the belly, and then turning the chest forward. Take your hands behind you, interlace your fingers. Inhale to take the shoulders onto the back, open up the heart. Then exhale to come to the top of the thigh, or maybe you want to even slide in towards the inner knee, inner thigh. Keeping the hands connected, let's repeat that. So inhale, rising up. Warrior one with this beautiful open heart. And exhale, taking it forward into devotional warrior to open the shoulders and the hips. And then coming all the way back up to standing, take your arms to the sky, lift them up, and bring your hands to your hips. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot and smoothly shift forward so you're standing at the top of the mat and we're gonna take on tree pose. So shifting the weight into the right foot. Starting with the variation, so we're gonna bring ankle, or heel to the ankle rather, left heel to the right ankle. If you wanna go a little more, you can bring your foot to your inner calf. Or maybe taking a hold of the foot and guiding it up to the inner thigh. So we're squeezing the foot into the leg, the leg into the foot, making sure that we're stable there and we're opening up through the hips. And then we're gonna lift the arms to the sky. Make sure that you're keeping breathing. Try not to hold the breath, keep it flowing. Milo, you're gonna take a hold of opposite wrists or elbows behind your back to open the front body. Elizabeth and I will bend the right elbow now. Tricep stretch. And then we're gonna slide the left hand behind the back, coming into this half Ugomukasana arm position to open up through the heart. bringing the hands to the hips, point the knee forward, and set the foot down. Right away, bring your hands to the back of your thighs and massage down the length of your legs. Touch the fingertips down. Big step back with your left leg for lizard. So we'll lower the left knee. Both hands come to the inside of the foot, and then we'll walk the front foot a little wider, make some space. Bending through the elbows and letting the chest melt down. Maybe bringing the forearms to the block, or maybe coming all the way down to the floor. Straightening the back leg will give you more should you need it. Remember the important role the breath plays in creating space. Breathe through whatever you have held at your hips. And lift up onto your hands. And we're going to just slide the block out of the way. We're going to walk the front foot back towards the center of the hands and just slide the knee back so that you're in hands and knees. And Milo, you can take child's pose so you can rest there, or you can follow Elizabeth and I. We're going to lift up into downward facing dog. Then we're going to shift forward into plank pose. I'm going to lower my knees, but you can certainly keep the knees lifted if you'd like. Hug your elbows in as you come down slowly with control to the belly. Shoulders roll back, heart lifts up for cobra. And then curling the toes under. Let's actually take it into child's pose. So knees coming to the earth, and we're going to rest here. So we're going to take a little break. Feel free to breathe here or grab a sip of water, and we'll see you in a moment. Interested in livening up your yoga practice? For more information on Melanie and Nova Yoga, check out NovaYogaOnline.com or visit her at Nova Yoga Studio at 125 Longs Hill. Well, welcome back. Today we're making space in the hips, the hearts, and the mind. So let's come forward into hands and knees. We'll meet there. And we're going to step the left foot up to meet the left thumb. So stepping that left foot forward, and maybe scooting the foot forward a little bit more, maybe 
and taking the back knee back so that you can get a little longer in this lunge. And you're gonna lower your right hand down to the mat and you're gonna take the left arm to the sky so that you open up into a twist, freeing the spine. And if you need to look down, you can certainly turn the gaze down. And then lowering your hand to the mat, and we're gonna take it into gate pose. So this is a little funky in the transition. We're going to swivel the back leg so that it becomes a kickstand, and we're gonna to turn to face the long edge of the mat. And so you're going to extend your leg out, and make sure that the leg extends directly out from the hip so it's not too far forward or back, and you can rest on your heel or the side of the foot, whatever feels good. So from here, you're gonna inhale, pick up the arm, with your exhale, you're gonna stretch the arm up and over the ear, finding that gorgeous expansion and openness through your side, your ribs, your intercostal muscles. And then you're gonna lift up from there, taking your hand down to the mat and taking that free arm to the sky. So some of you can follow Milo and stay here. Elizabeth and I are going to lift the top leg and then we're gonna bend the knee, reach back, hold the foot, and we're gonna create a little back bend here in our open sesame. So we're gonna gently press the foot into the hand to open up through the front body. And then letting go of the foot, touch the toes down, float the arm up, and we're gonna rise all the way back up to stand on the knee. And we're gonna face the original direction we were in, finding the lunge. And we're gonna move into pigeon. So Milo is actually gonna to move to his back. Elizabeth and I are gonna plant the hands straight in the back leg and then lift the left knee, settle the knee to the back of the wrist, settle the shin. So single pigeon, which is what we're in. Reclining pigeon, Milo is gonna take his left ankle to the right thigh. He's gonna flex that lifted foot, keep the knee moving away from him. And then from there, if you wish, he can take a hold of his right thigh and draw the leg in, which will give him more. So this pose is for opening up the hips. So you can stay there with the leg straight or you can bend the knee. If you're following Elizabeth and I, you can start to fold forward coming down to the forearms and this should offer you more throughout the outer hips. So just a couple of breaths here and you wanna make sure that your knees are happy. So if you're in single pigeon like we're in and your knees aren't happy, you can follow Milo's lead and work the pose on the back. You can also come to your forehead if you're feeling like you want more. Lift back up onto the hands and we're gonna move into hands and knees and Milo, you can come up and meet us there. So from hands and knees, you're gonna step your right foot forward. Walking the foot a little more forward, sliding the back knee back so that we're in a low lunge, knee over the ankle. Set your left hand down, take your right arm to the sky and twist open. Look down if you need to give your neck a break. And lower your hand. Let your back leg turn to create a kickstand. Turn to face the long edge of the mat and extend the leg out so that it's straight, either resting on the heel or the sole of your foot. Gate pose, inhale, lift the arm, and exhale, stretch up and over, hand sliding down that extended leg. Lifting up from here, place your hand onto the mat, wrist under the shoulder, and take that free arm straight up to the sky. You can hold here, or you can lift your top leg, bend your knee, reach back, hold the foot, open sesame, gently press the foot into the hand to create the back bend, finding space. And gently let go of the foot if you have a hold of it, float the arm up, rise up to stand on the knee, turning to face the front of the mat, finding your way into that lunge, and then from there, pigeon, so you can follow Milo on the back, or you can straighten the leg, press the palms down, lift the knee in, and then place the shin. Back leg in line with the body. If you're on your back, heel or ankle to your thigh, maybe hugging the knee in, or maybe just staying just as you are, foot on the ground. You can come forward into the fold in single pigeon, maybe even coming down to the, the 
forehead. Deep breaths to make all of that space that we're searching for. And then rise back up. And then from here, let's come into a seated position. So we're gonna sit with the soles of the feet connected, drawing the heels in towards the groin. And we're gonna wrap up the toes, the ankles, or the shins. Inhale, lifting through the heart. Exhale, waving the spine forward, maybe using your elbows to guide the knees down, or maybe walking the hands forward with the palms facing up. Take a few breaths here into the inner hips, the groins, the inner thighs. And just let your head drop. And then roll up from this place. We're gonna stay just as we are. We're all gonna roll down together into Shavasana. So feet to the mat, knees are bent, freeing your arms and you're gonna roll all the way down onto your back into that position of surrender and rest. And once you're there, just completely flake out, straighten out through your legs, stretch out through your arms, your palms, your chest, close your eyes, enjoy all of that space, that juicy goodness, and your breath. I thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again. Shanti. Hey yogis, we want to hear from you. Enjoy the show? Have a suggestion? We love your feedback. Send us a note at rogerstv.com or call 757-9600.